In this video, you will learn how to send related data for multiple tables and how to save an image collection to a SharePoint library. In this study case, we have a company that collects data to run some sort of bid. After finishing the process, a few signatures are collected. Here we have some different forms and one of them is being used to save the signatures. If you're not aware, Power Apps has a native object called Pen Input that allows you to collect signatures. After hitting Save the Image, we're sent to a SharePoint library using a flow from Power Automate. Before we understand how everything is working here, let's take a look on the data model. This will be very important because all the data holds a relationship. So we will understand not only how to save all this data but also how to create the relationship between the SharePoint lists. Before we move on and understand what is under the hood please don't forget to like and subscribe. This will help us to produce more free content. Now that you already liked and subscribed let's move on. First step on the property called on visible will be creating two collections. The reason is because we already know that this data will behave in a static manner. Therefore we make a few definitions and let it be on the app memory. As the form is being completed we will be updating the collection. And the end this will allow us to do a single patch instead of using a for all function. Now let's understand how the data is being saved. Besides doing the patch function for creating a new record we also will store the result on a variable. That's why we are encapsulating it with the set function. This variable will be useful for storing the parent record ID and providing this information for the child records. Remember that the data is being changed on the collection as the user makes changes on the objects. At the moment of saving the data, we will get this variable and also update the parent ID field for the child records. Finally, we have the image signature collection. We will need to leverage a Power Automate flow to save the data on a SharePoint library. So the first thing we do is call the flow from Power Apps and store the collection in a Compose action. Compose will be a static variable of any kind. After we can parse the JSON that was sent from Power Apps. For setting the JSON schema, you can run the flow one time and copy the result. Notice the image is coming in this string format known as base64. We will need to remove the prefix on the beginning for creating this image correctly. Here is where you can provide a sample of the JSON. So the next step is to remove the base64 prefix. For doing so we can use the replace expression from Power Automate. Let's take a closer look on the formula. All you need to do is to provide the string you want to modify it and in the second argument specify the text to be replaced. In this case we are replacing it with a blank space. And now the next step is to create the file. Notice we are using the expression UTC now for creating unique names for the file. Also we need to specify the format with .jpg. Also we need to convert that base64 string that represents the image into a binary format. For this we are using the expression that converts base64 to binary. After the file was created we use the action update file properties. This will fill the fields related to that signature such as the name of the company, the parent ID and the name of the person that signed. Remember this all came from a Power Apps collection. So just to recap, here we have the Power Automate flow inside of the Power Apps. And here is the formula that calls the flow. Notice that the collection is being encapsulated with a JSON function. This later allows Power Automate to parse the data.
Thanks for watching this video. I know this might be a lot of information so feel free to ask anything on the comments section. See you next time.